Hi, this is Ron Sipsick. This is the second part of a five-part series on the fundamentals of supply and demand. In this particular segment, we're going to take a look at the difference between a change in the quantity supplied and a change in supply. So we set the models up uh, with, with supply curves. And in the first case, we're going to take a look at the effect of price on quantity supplied. So let's assume that a producer, let's say, of corn experiences an increase in the price of corn. In fact, let's expand this out to a market where we're talking about all producers. And so corn prices have increased, but let's say that the cost of producing corn has not changed. Now let's remember some things here. The price is what the consumer pays the cost is what the farmer pays out to make corn. So if the price goes up and the cost remains constant, we could say that there's an increase in profit. This leads to an increase in profit. And increases in profit generally lead to increases in production. So this higher price needs to be correlated with an increase in production. So how are we going to show this? Well, let's find a point on the supply curve. And this point will be called P1.1, which corresponds with QS1. So every point on the supply curve corresponds to a unique price in quantity. Let's say the price of corn increases for some reason. Maybe there's been an increase in the demand for corn. Uh, perhaps corn is now being used for ethanol. And the increase in the demand for corn has pushed the price of corn up. In fact, that's what we saw the last 10 or so years. Corn prices reached historical levels due to the ethanol program, which uh, put demand pressure on corn supplies. So the effect of the higher price of corn is to raise the profits of corn farmers and to motivate corn farmers to produce more corn. And so we're going to indicate QS2 here, which corresponds with 0.2, which corresponds with 0.1. Notice that the increase in price moved us along the same supply curve. And the supply curve did not shift. We stayed on the same supply curve as we moved the price up. We would say then that there is no, no, no change in supply. Now, people who don't study economics are free to say things like increases in price lead to an increase in the supply of corn. But people who study, uh, study economics shouldn't say such things. We need to be careful with our terminology if we're going to be clear about what we mean. Increases in price increase, let me change the color here, increases in price increase the quantity supplied but have no effect on the position of the supply curve. So here price moves us along the curve has no effect on the position of the supply curve, only increases the quantity supplied. Now let's go over to the other model and let's look at a change in supply. Assume that the price of corn doesn't change, but let's also assume that there's a decrease in the cost of production. A key ingredient that goes into producing corn is petroleum. Domestic corn in the United States is made um, with a lot of petroleum. Petroleum is used to power tractors and other farm equipment. But petroleum is also put into fertilizers. In fact, fertilizers many times are petroleum-based and as are pesticides. So when oil prices decrease, when oil becomes cheaper, pesticides often become cheaper, fertilizers become cheaper, fuel costs for tractors become cheaper, Therefore, the cost of making corn decreases. Well, 
if the cost decreases when the price doesn't change, the profit in corn production is going to increase. Anything that increases profits, as we said earlier, is going to motivate the profit-seeking firm to increase its production. Now, let's find a point on the supply curve. Okay, and P1, QS1. Notice we're holding the price of corn constant. Now, we are not in any way suggesting that the price of corn never changes. But in order to examine the effect of cost on the, on the picture, we want to hold price constant. And so let's change our colors. Let's get a different color going here. Somehow, we need to show greater production at the same price. The price hasn't changed, but the production needs to increase. How do we illustrate that? The only way to illustrate that is to shift the supply curve to the right. When that supply curve moves to the right, now, at that price, P1, producers are willing to produce more corn. So, there was an increase in the quantity supplied but that had nothing to do with price. That had only to do with cost. Notice in this case, cost is what we call a non-price factor. Non-price factor. Why is cost not price? Because cost is not price. If it's not price, it's non-price. Now, again, this is very much parallel to what we said about demand. Changes in price move us along the same curve. Notice here, the change in cost, a non-price factor, actually shifted the supply curve. This is called a change in supply. Specifically, it's an increase in supply. Why? Because we're producing more corn. Corn production is increasing at every price. So an increase in supply is a rightward shift in the supply curve. What is it? It's an increase in the quantity supplied assuming price isn't changing. Well, how can the quantity supplied increase if the price hasn't changed? Something else must have changed. In this case, a non-price factor called cost. So, once again, we see the, the principle that price moves us along the curve, non-price factors shift the curve. Now, let's look at some other factors besides cost that can affect supply. So these would be called non-price factors affecting supply. We've already talked about one of these factors. Cost. A decrease in cost will increase supply. Again, what is an increase in supply? Increase in production, assuming the price hasn't changed. Of course, an increase in cost would have just the opposite effect. It would decrease supply. Another factor that could affect supply would be technology. Improvements in technology lead to an increase in supply. Rightward shift, assuming you're holding the price of the product constant and you're holding cost constant, production cost. Say that uh, the farmer has put in a better pesticide. The pesticide is able to kill bugs, bugs better. Um, 
deader bugs means the corn, more corn is coming to harvest. We get more corn per acre of land that is harvestable. And so increases in technology, say a better pesticide or a better fertilizer, can improve yields. What if the government were to step in and ban the use of a pesticide because the pesticide, let's, let's face it, was very effective. It not only killed bugs, it was killing humans. Uh, that's very effective. Well, that's not the kind of effectiveness we want to see with a pesticide. We want it strong enough to kill the bugs, but not strong enough or toxic enough to kill humans or hurt humans. So we may ban that pesticide in the, in the public interest of safety, but in banning that pesticide, we might see corn yields decrease. Well, what is a decrease in supply? It's a decrease in the quantity supplied that had nothing to do with price. In this case, it had to do with technology. Number three, move down here a little bit. Uh, prices of related products. There's two types of related products on the supply side. There are what we call complements and there are substitutes. Let me do complements first. Uh, a good example here would be whenever we produce gasoline from a barrel of oil we get kerosene. So if there's an increase in the price of gasoline, um, it's likely refineries will want to produce more gasoline. Law of supply. Law of supply, higher price, higher production. However, if the price of gasoline goes up, that would also lead to an increase in the supply of kerosene. Kerosene is a byproduct. It's a positive by byproduct of gasoline production. Pollution would be an example of a negative byproduct of gasoline production. Now we're holding the price of kerosene constant. This has nothing to do with the price of kerosene. It has to do with the price of gasoline. Well, if the price of one product causes the supply of another product to increase, we know those products are complements in production. And of course this would work in reverse. If gasoline prices fall, and we don't want to produce as much gasoline, we also are not going to supply as much kerosene. B, there are also what are called substitutes in production. Okay, these would be, this would be a case where in making one product you can't make the other product. So let's say there's an increase in the price of gasoline. Well, we'll want to produce more gasoline, but in producing more gasoline, there's going to be a decrease in the supply, let's say, of heating oil. Heating oil is actually a substitute in production. If you make gasoline with a barrel of oil, you can't use the same barrel of oil for heating oil. If you make heating oil, you can't make gasoline. Now we're assuming the price of heating oil is being held constant. If the price of gasoline drops and the production of gasoline drops as a result, it's very likely the supply of heating oil could increase. Okay, So there are many examples of products that are either produced as complements, byproducts of each other, or substitutes. Where producing one means you can't produce the other. Now let's finish up here with number four and five, expected prices. Sellers, like buyers, are moved by their expectations. If there's an increase in the expected price, let's say, of beef, you'd expect the cattle ranchers would want to supply less beef today for slaughter. So we're holding today's price of beef constant. It's not a matter of today's price of beef changing. Its expectations have changed. So we are expecting beef prices to increase in the future. We'd expect to see fewer cows slaughtered today, less beef brought to market today, as cattle ranchers wait and try to supply more in the future. If cattle ranchers expect that the price of beef is going to drop in the future, they're going to try to supply more beef today. So here we're talking about supply today, not tomorrow. And then lastly, and this is an important factor, is the number of firms number of firms. And this is uh, 
rather simple because uh, it's very much common sense. Increasing the number of firms, more pizza parlors in a particular city, par pizza operations increase in the supply of pizza. Decrease in the number of firms, we would expect to see a decrease in the supply. So again, let's, let's back up here and summarize real quickly before we wrap up. Movement along a supply curve simply shows the law of supply. This is the law of supply. Higher prices, higher production. Movement along the supply curve, law of supply. Notice there's no change in supply even though this is called the law of supply, there's no change in supply, there's only a change in the quantity supplied. Where in the case of non-price factors changing, we see the supply curve shifting either left or right. In our next lesson, we're going to take a look at shortages. We'll see you then.